Welcome to Maison Mission. I'm Kevin, and I'm really glad that you've tuned in with us today. Maison is a Greek word that means greater. Maison Mission is all about creating greater spaces for people to hear and experience the good news of Jesus. Before we go into our program today, uh, we just have a couple things that we want you to know about. Partnership for Strong Families is doing their annual Wish Upon a Star holiday drive. We want to encourage you or your family to purchase a gift for a child. Each child gift should be budgeted around $50. We've got four sponsorship slots available. Email info at maisonmission.com or let us know on the digital connect card that shows up on your screen. Our next Maison Live is going to be on November 20th. I'm really excited about this one because our friend Jethro Decimus from La Famille, our ministry partner in Haiti, is going to be here live sharing with us. And so you don't want to miss that. Also, we're going to have a potluck dinner afterwards, so bring a dish to share. It's always a great time hanging out afterwards. Like I said, Sunday, November 20th, 5 p.m. here at FCC, Maison Live. Don't want to miss it. Some of you have already asked, what are we doing for Christmas? Well, it's going to be really special. Mark your calendars for Christmas Eve. It's a Saturday this year. We're going to be doing a special service project. We're going to get together here at FCC, and we're going to pack some gift bags together, and then we're going to send teams out all over the city to deliver those gift bags to service workers that have to work on Christmas Eve as just a thank you to let you know, hey, we're so thankful for you. We see you. We know that it's hard to be out here on Christmas Eve, and we just want you to be seen and known and loved on by us. And so it's going to be great. Um, we're going to be going to like some, some of the ERs in the area, uh, police, fire, ambulance, uh, convenience stores, basically all kinds of places around town where there are people who have to work on Christmas Eve to help other people enjoy their times with their families and enjoy the holiday. So mark your calendars, plan to be here Christmas Eve, invite some friends out. It's going to be really special. I mean, how many churches get together and actually go out and serve their communities on a major holiday like this? I think it's really awesome. It flips the script. It just kind of turns everything upside down. And uh, that's what Maison Mission does. We just kind of do everything upside down. It's so good. So uh, join us Christmas Eve. This week, we have a special guest who's going to be sharing with us for Compassion Month. Our very own volunteer compassion director, Melissa Kiefer, is going to be sharing a message with us today. I'm so thankful for Melissa because she has really basically pioneered all of the ministry opportunities and ministry partners that we have here at Maison Mission over these first two years. And it's really awesome to have her here today. So check it out as she continues in our Compassion Month series. Jesus spent his time with people for whom life was not easy. And there, amid those who were suffering, he was the embodiment of perfect love. My parents aren't very religious, and growing up my religious education was spotty at best. But I did have a favorite Bible story. It was the story of Jesus feeding a crowd with five loaves and two fish. I had a book, probably sent by one of my grandmothers who were religious, with the version from John. In the story, a little boy's mother packs some food for him to take when he goes to hear the great rabbi speak. Here's the rest of the story from John chapter 6. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed it to those who were seated, 
as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. About six or seven years ago, I decided if I was going to call myself a Christian, I should probably read the manual. So I bought one of those read the whole Bible in one year books. And I'm not going to lie, it took me four years to finish it. The book I used was called A One-Year Trip Through the Bible by Stephen Ruth. Instead of reading the Bible cover to cover, Stephen Ruth's book assigns for each day an Old Testament passage starting with Genesis, a New Testament passage starting with the Gospels, a proverb, and a psalm. It was around January 22nd, and I got to the Matthew version of the five loaves and two fish, and Mr. Ruth wrote something that really shook me up. Maybe Jesus didn't add anything as the food was being passed around. Ruth writes, in the loaves and fishes story, perhaps the miracle was that people were able to share whatever they had brought with them, and there was enough for everyone. And then when he went right on with his commentary, as if he hadn't completely changed my perspective on my favorite gospel story. Does that idea shake you up too? Is it blasphemy to imply that Jesus didn't magically feed a crowd of people with a handful of provisions? Does it make the event less miraculous? Or does it shift the responsibility for who is supposed to take care of those thousands of people in the crowd? Until then, I assume the moral of the story was that whatever little bit we each have gets transformed when we hand it over to Jesus. Jesus can turn a little something into something great. But after reading Ruth's commentary, I started to wonder if the real moral is that we already have enough and we just need to do a better job of sharing it. The miracle of Jesus is not that he can create more resources, but that he inspires us to take care of each other by sharing what we already have. When I was a kid, I was attracted to this story because a child was the one who started the miracle. As an adult, I imagined the audacity of some little guy pulling on Andrew's robe and offering the contents of his lunchbox to help feed a crowd of thousands. Only a kid would do that. It's ridiculous to think that a little bit of food could make a difference in feeding so many people. It would never work. Maybe I should be telling this to a therapist and not to YouTube, but I always struggle with the feeling that I'm not quite enough. I'm not working hard enough, not giving away enough, not spending enough time on relationships or good works. In that way, I'm like Philip and Andrew in the story. I look at all that needs to be done and the little bit I have, and I don't believe it's possible. It's so easy to get overwhelmed and just give up. Without Jesus, Philip and Andrew would have probably dispersed the crowd to fend for themselves. Some people probably packed food and would have been fine, but many others would have had a hungry trip home. And everyone would have missed the chance to share a meal in the presence of Jesus. I'm sure they all told their grandchildren about that day. Something interesting about this story is that it's one of only two that appear in all four Gospels. The other one is where Jesus walks on water, just in case that comes up in trivia or something. I always believe the repetition means that this story is extra important. Maybe that's true, but Mr. Ruth believes the event may have happened more than once. So it wasn't just a fluke that a bunch of strangers were willing to share food at a time when resources were scarce. Either way, I think it means that we're not supposed to give up when what we have isn't enough to help. I think it means we should give, even if it's only a few dollars or a little bit of our lunch. I think it means we're supposed to help out even when we only have an hour to spare. I think it means we don't have to wait for someone else to solve the problems because we already have the solution available. We need Jesus, but not as a conjurer, as a catalyst to bring together all the pieces. No one person in that crowd would have been likely to share if they thought others wouldn't do the same. It was Jesus' presence that inspired so many to be their best. And then a miracle happened. It's Compassion Month here at Maison. Today, I challenge us to put ourselves in that crowd of people and think of what small thing we can each contribute. Don't try to accomplish something big. That's pride. 
Don't get overwhelmed and give up. That makes you like Philip and Andrew, and you'll just send everyone home. Instead, give thanks like Jesus did, and trust that the small thing you contribute will be a piece of the big solution. Let's pray. Lord, please help us to conquer our feeling of inadequacy. Help us to realize that what you've given us is already enough to help those who need to be helped. Allow us to avoid feeling overwhelmed and instead just give the little bit that we have to spare so that everyone in the crowd can have a meal and there's 12 baskets left over. We love you and we praise you. Amen. Amen.